fun and easy make um, using some of our frameless dies and I'm going to show you how to make a gorgeous 4th of July bunting ready to decorate your house um, or if you're having a party or a gathering fingers crossed um, in the US ready to celebrate the 4th of July I'm going to make sure that you've got your bunting ready to fully decorate um, and it is such an easy simple make that I think young children could get involved in help you guys make this one so you could make it a really fun family activity for everyone to kind of get involved with which I think would be really really nice okay so I'm gonna hop straight into it I'm gonna as usual bring the camera down so that you guys can see a little bit closer of what I'm doing so just bear with me a second while I do that and I make sure everything's in frame and we'll get started okay Perfect. Okay, so like I said um, at the beginning, this is a bunting made using our framelits dies. So our framelits come in several different shapes. So we have circles, stars, squares, ovals, um, scallop circles. There's pretty much every basic shape you can think of. Um, and it just means that you get a set of all the same shape but different sizes. So I'm gonna use the circle framelits mostly and I'm gonna use a larger one and then a slightly, quite small circle. You can obviously change up these sizes depending on how big or small you want your bunting to be, um, but you'll see the kind of route that I'm going down as we go. And then you can kind of pick the sizes that you think would work best. But if you're aiming for something similar to what I'm gonna make, you want these two similar sizes, okay? We are also going to be using the star framelit set as well, um, but it's kind of mainly the circles. So I'm going to take the largest or the larger circle framelit. And what I've done is I have die cut a circle out of white cardstock and out of our red hibiscus coloured cardstock. So the red is from our assorted cardstock pack and then this is just plain white cardstock okay and with both what you want to do is you want to fold them in half okay and then you want to just take a pair of scissors and just cut along that line you could use a ruler and a craft knife if you prefer um, but you don't need to be too precise. Just cut roughly down the middle. Okay, so we've got four semicircles. And I have done mine, as you can probably tell, off to the side in alternate colours. So for one, I've got two reds and a white, and then the other, I've got two whites and a red, and I've kind of alternated them. So depending on whether you're alternating or whether you're doing them all the same colour, it depends on what semicircles you're going to use or what colours you're going to use. So I'm going to carry on alternate, alternating mine. So I'm going to be using two white and one red semicircle. And for every piece of bunting, you need three of these larger circles to make up that fan shape. And then you need an extra one to go on the back, okay? But for the fan shape, you just need three. So obviously, if I was doing the other way around, I do two red and one white okay and then what you're going to do is you're going to to concertina fold each of these in a fan shape so you want to work from the center point of that top line you can fold it in half and create um, a little fold here so you know roughly where that mark is but um you can kind of eyeball it and as you fold you can kind of make sure that it folds and lines up along this curve and you'll kind of see what I mean as I go and that means you're going to create a really nice fan shape so as I fold I want that to line up roughly with that and then I'm going to fold it over or turn it over and fold it again okay always using that top point as my anchor and again okay and you want to keep going like so 
until you pull it out and you have that lovely fan shape okay so you want to do that with every single um one until you've got two whites and one red okay so obviously all from the same semicircle semicircles um and just doing that same folding technique the concertina folding technique making it look like a little fan okay and then we're going to adhere them together i'm going to use a hot glue gun just to ensure that they all stick but you could also use our express glue and um, if you prefer it to be a little bit more child friendly but a hot glue gun will just make sure it's fully secure and it's quick um so that's what i'm going to do today and you want to obviously glue these tabs together or the white ones either side of the red and then we're going to keep the top part of the white free okay so i've got my hot glue gun and I'm just going to pop some hot glue Ooh. on there and kind of do my best to line them up and give them a squeeze to make sure they're attached, okay? And then I'm going to do the same on this side. Move my glue gun stand. And don't worry about glue gun strings or anything, you can pull those off um, at the end. Okay. And again, just kind of line it up as best you can and give it a squeeze. Okay. So that's the kind of effect that we have at the moment. I'm just going to pull those glue gun strings off. Okay, so you have that sort of folded semicircle now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take another white semicircle. You could also use red, but I kind of suggest that if you've got one with more white on, that you use a white semicircle as a background, or if you've got one with two pieces of red, you use the red as a background. It doesn't make too much difference. You're not gonna see it. It just gives something for these fan pieces to kind of sit on and stay attached to almost, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach the back pieces. So I'm also going to like, almost kind of attach these two end flaps to the back of the bunting. And this means that I've then got a nice flat top piece. So if you do need to fold a couple of pieces differently to make that happen, that's absolutely fine. So I kind of need to change the way this one folds. So I kind of need to do it like that. And then I'm just going to trim this extra one off because I don't need that anymore. And you'll see what I mean when I glue it on. So I'm going to put glue on these two flaps here and attach it to the back of my white semicircle. Again, I'm going to use hot glue just for convenience more than anything. And I'm going to do one tab at a time just to ensure I've got it in the right place. So I kind of want that lined up like that ever so slightly inside so it's not overhanging and then you kind of attach it like so okay so you've got a back tab there and then we're going to attach that back tab on there so you want the semicircle obviously inside of those folds you don't want it overhanging so it's longer than the um, fan so i'm just going to pop a little bit more and secure that in place so that's kind of attached on the back and it is lifting at the front a little bit and we're going to fix that now with some more hot glue so i'm just going to pop some more hot glue just along 
the back of the semicircle so that the fan, the, the bottom of the fan can um, be adhered down. And you don't have to be fancy about this, I'm just putting a good chunk of hot glue on and then I'm going to press it down. And the more you get used to making these, the quicker it's going to be. So it seems quite complicated now, um, especially with those like tab bits and everything. But as soon as you make one, you're going to be flying through because they're so easy to make once you sort of get the hang of it. So um, don't worry, it won't take you ages to make a bunting. <laughs> um, and then to hide this little piece up here, I'm going to take a blue circle that I've die cut using the smaller circle that I showed you at the beginning. Again, I folded it in half and cut it. So I've got a semicircle and I want that to go on there. So that's going to cover up that little bit. And what I'm going to use to adhere this is some foam tape. And I'm going to take, um, I think, several layers of foam tape. And I'm just literally going to layer them on top of one another. So about three or four layers just to make it slightly even with these points of the fan. I might do one more so I've got four and just rip these with your finger this is our Sizzix foam tape I just literally just rip it um, just makes life a lot easier than using my scissors and then just layer them up hopefully you can see that I've created a little bit of a layer and then I'm just going to literally stick that onto there and kind of line it up with the top section. So I'm just going to turn this around so I can see. There we go and that just kind of hides all that middle bit okay. Last but not least we need a little bit of sparkle on each piece of bunting. So what I've done is I've taken these star framelits and this is the smallest star from the framelit set and obviously they get much bigger to the size of that larger circle but I'm just taking the little baby one and I've die cut it from some of our ivory opulent cardstock. This is the glitter effect just because I wanted a little bit of sparkle and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of foam tape and I'm just going to attach that with a little bit of foam tape, just to make it stand out. And again, just to add that little bit of sparkle, we've got to have stars and stripes on any 4th of July make, <laughs> of course. And so there we go. So I've got a few of them ready made. And then our last thing I just wanna do is obviously attach them to some ribbon. So I'm just gonna line up my ribbon and bring back my hot glue gun and all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop hot glue along that top bit and this is why we created those folded tabs to create that flat top edge and it makes it so much easier to attach to a piece of ribbon. Um, so I'm just going to do literally just a line of hot glue and then just take my ribbon and attach it. If you do have um, young children helping you with this and you're worried about their fingers with the hot glue ones or anything like that, um, we do have a glue gun accessory kit that has a heat proof mat and it also has little silicone thimbles to put on your fingers and it just protects your fingers obviously from the hot glue. So that would be um, a big sort of safety precaution for you guys if you are making this with little ones and you're just a little bit concerned they're just a little bit young to be using a hot glue gun um definitely consider using those silicon thimbles from the glue gun accessory kit okay i'm just going to keep on gluing these i'm leaving just a little gap in between each um but you could do them quite flush next to each other if you wanted completely up to you da, 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 da. there we go and last one 
obviously I've only done four here but if you were decorating your home or like your porch or something like that um then you may want to make a lot more and the good thing is because they are paper they're super super light so wherever you stick them i think they're going to um hang really really nicely okay so there you have it your gorgeous fun um fourth of july bunting okay so i'm just going to bring the camera up hold it up for you guys so you can see it um sort of a little bit more face on and then I'll say my goodbyes, okay? So. Okay. Hopefully I'm still in shot. <laughs> okay, so there you go, guys. We have our gorgeous 4th of July bunting. Um, super easy to make, really fun, and really perfect to decorate your home or whatever party venue you're hopefully having for 4th of July um this year um and hopefully it'll just add a little bit of fun and festiveness to your holiday okay and you can make this as long or as short as you want you could even add more sparkle or glitter you could get your little ones to decorate the little white bits with some drawings or something like that you could really customize this and have a lot of fun and i hope everyone at home has fun recreating this or decorating their homes for 4th of July and I hope you have a wonderful celebration um, this year whether you're celebrating obviously in the US or maybe you're just celebrating in somewhere else in the world <laughs> okay so there you have it guys I hope you loved seeing how to make this 4th of July bunting today um, if you did want to check out those framelits or the cardstock or the glue gun or the accessory kit or anything like that make sure to head on over to the Sizzix website it will all be there um, on there so just type in anything that I've mentioned today and it will be on there for you um, uh, but if you do recreate this or any kind of 4th of July decorations or anything like that, I would love to see it. So please leave me a um, picture or a comment down below. I would definitely love to see that. If you do use the hashtag my making story as well, we do tend to pick up on those. So definitely pop that hashtag if you are posting your makes on our socials um okay well, that's everything from me today guys i really hope you enjoyed watching and making along with me i hope you all have a wonderful happy and safe fourth of july celebration this year um wherever you are whatever you're doing and i will see you in the next one but until then stay safe and keep crafting thanks bye